smaller and lighter in color. That's pretty typical of females. So she's got a nice light tan color from nose to flippers. And she weighs right about 200 pounds, which is in the middle of the range for a female. They can range anywhere. Oh, okay. I'm going to ask him to hang out right there for me. Now, Dorothy is our male sea lion again, so you can tell that he's a male because he's much bigger and darker than Briny is. But he's got a nice chocolate brown color from nose to flippers. And where little Briny weighs in about 200 pounds, big old Dorothy here is right about 430 pounds. <laughs> Apparently, he's not a very big fan of that. He's staring at the video I have ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> Good. And he's pretty upset by that. Anybody know why that's upsetting for a sea lion? I heard somebody say because they are not seals. That's right. They are loud and proud California sea lions. They are actually two completely different species of animal, seal and sea lion. So while we have them out here, we'll go ahead and point out some surefire ways to tell the difference between the two. Target. The first difference right here on the side of their head. They have something sticking out right behind their eye. What is that? Ear. That is their ear, that's right. Good. Sea lions have that seal joke. You and I will have it too. It's called an external ear flap. This part of your ear, that's your external ear flap. Do you think that rolled up into like a taco shape? Good. That's what our sea lions have. It's a little bit different than yours, but it's the same thing. Another difference is that sea lions have these nice big flippers. Good. So they are going to use those front flippers to prop themselves up. You can see they've got their head and chest above the ground. Good standing up, and then they can actually rotate those back flippers under their body and walk on all fours. Good. They're actually pretty agile on land and even make pretty good climbers good. because they've got those nice big flippers. Now, seals have much shorter flippers, so they're not going to be able to do this. Brandy back there doing her strut, so anyhow, she can walk on all fours. Good. Now, we don't have seals here to show you what it looks like when they come out on land. But our sea lions have actually been working on a seal impersonation. It was really hard to train. They've been working really hard. But you want to see the progress they have made? Yeah. yeah. All right. So here it is. Our world famous seal impersonation on the count of three. Three, two, one. Uh, <laughs> good. All right. Seals do move around a little bit more than that. So <laughs> that's pretty much what they're going to look like when they come out on land. Now when our sea lions get in the water. Good. If you can see them right now, well, those of you at the upper deck might be able to tell, our sea lions are using those front flippers and moving them down, up and down, in kind of a flying motion, a lot like we swim. Those backs kind of drag behind. Maybe they do a little bit of steering. This is the exact opposite of what a seal is going to do. Ready? So you just how fast our sea lions can go. Seals are going to use those back flippers to actually push themselves through, and their front flippers are used more for steering. Now the last difference, and any of you that have ever been out to the California coast probably know it, but maybe Dorsey can tell us what it is. Good. That's right, sea lions do make an awful lot of noise, much more than you are ever going to hear seal making. So what kind of animals do we have here? Sea lions. Sea lions, that's right. Hopefully nobody else can we'll call them seals. Now, as trainers, it is our job to make sure we're giving our sea lions the best possible care that we can. And that involves a lot of things. We do have two full-time vets on staff that do make exhibit calls, and they can be here at a moment's notice. But as trainers, we really want to make sure we keep an eye on our sea lions' health, too. So when we come in in the morning, we're going to do all sorts of things to check over their bodies and make sure they're really healthy. We're going to take a look at those flippers. Make sure there's no cuts and scrapes there. But just like little kids, sometimes they do get a little cut up on the rock. We just like to keep an eye on it. We're going to put them in that seal position that we saw. Check over those, their bodies, get our hands on them. We're also going to get them used to doing things like blood draws and x-rays, which the vets are going to want to do at some point. We actually have recently done x-rays with Bryony and recently done blood draws with Dorothy here. Good. Dorothy likes it so much, she doesn't want to stop. Target. <laughs> Target. There we go. Good. Now, what else are we going to do in the morning? What do you all do in the morning to get ready for going to school or going to work? No, we'll just wait. 
I heard somebody rest your teeth. First, can we take a look at those pearly whites? No, maybe not. What do you think? No. <laughs> Target. Open. They want to see your teeth. There we go. Everyone see those teeth? What color are those teeth? Black. They are black. Oh my goodness. I bet you Brian's teeth are the same color, right? Good. They are black. Well, luckily, I think Lisa has a toothbrush with her. Good. So she's going to go ahead and brush those teeth. And what do you think, Lisa? Are they getting any whiter? She said not at all. Well, that's okay. Black is a really natural, healthy color for sea lion's teeth to be. We could brush their teeth because all day long, every single day, they will stay black. But just like you and I, it's important that we brush our teeth every single day. So we do brush our teeth, sea lion's teeth at least once a day also. Now you might have noticed we do all of these things. We are not forcing our feelings to do anything they don't want to do. I'm not standing up here prying Dorothy's mouth open. That probably would not work out too well for me. <laughs> He's 430 pounds of male sea lion. I couldn't pry his mouth open if I wanted to. So what I'm doing instead is actually using training to teach our sea lions what we want from them. Good. We do use positive reinforcement to train our sea lions, and actually with animals throughout the zoo, not just with the sea lions. So the dog, the dog, well, yeah, the dogs, the bears, also works good on cats and dogs. But don't worry if you don't have cats and dogs at home, you can also use it on your spouse, your children, your co-workers, your roommates. Yeah, it's pretty simple. All we do is anytime our sea lions do something we like, we reinforce it with their favorite thing in the entire world. What do y'all think that is? Fish. Somebody's way ahead of me. That's right. We do use fish. Now I recommend when you train your family members, don't use fish. You can use chocolate or money, but our sea lions don't like chocolate. Good. And they don't have the accounts, right? Or good. No, they don't. So we do use fish as or killer whales in the school. So our sea lions aren't having to run away from predators. Things they would be doing out in the ocean to get exercise. So we like to make sure that we can use our training to get them a little bit of exercise here at the zoo. For instance, Lisa just threw a ball in for Briny. Hopefully Briny will go get that ball for her, get her heart rate going, using those front flippers to pull herself through the water, getting moving. And it's especially great for Briny because she's a little bit older. Anything we can do in the water with her to put less stress on her joints but still getting that exercise is great for her to do. And hopefully she will get that ball right back to Lisa. As she blows her whistle, you'll know Brandy did it correctly. There she goes. Great job, Brandy. But Dorothy doesn't get to miss out on the fun. We like to do exercise with him as well. We can do things on land. Let's do a little bit of calisthenics. Good. <laughs> or we can also do things with him in the water. Things that actually stimulate what he would be doing out there in the ocean, like hunting for fish. Now, I guarantee you in the ocean, he would not be hunting for neon rings. But here at the zoo, we like to use those rings to stimulate fish, and he's going to use a lot of the same behaviors that he would be using in the ocean, like those powerful front flippers to pull himself through, his really sensitive whiskers to find those rings, those teeth to grasp onto the rings just like he would fish, and he brought them right back to me. Nice job, buddy. Yeah. So you can see how our sea lions are really getting some exercise here at the zoo, too. Good. They're exercising their muscles as well as their brains. They're having to think about what we're asking them to do. Because it's important to exercise your brain, too, as well as your muscles. And we use our training to make sure all of this is happening. Now our sea lions here are nice and healthy, but sea lions out in the ocean are pretty healthy also. Good. On the last count, there were about 250,000 of them out there. Now that's California sea lions, because that's a really nice healthy number. <laughs> the California sea lions are sea lions out there. There are actually six species of sea lion out there. Bye, bye. And you can find them almost all over the world, including South America, New Zealand, and Australia. And up until about the 1940s, there were actually seven species of sea lion out there. Good. I know, guys. It's pretty upsetting. In the 1940s, we believe we saw the last ever Japanese sea lion. And in the 1970s, they were officially declared extinct due to things like pollution and overfishing. I know, Dorf. Nobody likes pollution. Good. 
Anyway, I'll be saying a lot up here in Oklahoma. Even if we blew it here, that's not going to affect us going out in the ocean, right? Rape? Is that right, Dirk? <laughs> yeah? No. Good. He says that's not right. All the waterways are connected. <laughs> so everything.